Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. I'm going to start out today with some water, Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, and some Titanium White. I'm going to mix that all up there on my palette using my huge large 3 inch brush and I'm going to put it directly onto my canvas board. That canvas board today is textured with some PVA glue right from the bottle. I took first uh, the canvas board, laid it flat, put a bunch of glue on it, then spread it out with a palette knife. After that I took my blow dryer, dried it off for about five to six minutes, then I allowed it to stand upright and allowed the glue, which wasn't perfectly dry, to kind of start to sag downwards with gravity. After that I flipped it totally around. So the glue is dry to the touch, but underneath it will move a little bit. And if you watch carefully, you may notice that the glue is actually moving underneath the paint that I'm putting on right now. It's going to move around a little bit while I'm painting, but that's okay because once you paint the paint onto it and then it moves, beautiful cracks are going to be showing up. And I really like that effect. My palette today is Titanium White, Red Oxide, Naples Yellow, Cobalt Blue, Mars Black, and Ultramarine Blue. And you can see that ultramarine blue is what I'm putting onto the canvas right now. Back to my gray mix of the white, black, and blue. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, really trying not to overthink this process. Simply putting paint onto the canvas, allowing my intuition to guide me. Here's some more of the ultramarine blue and the Mars black. And the whole time I'm really going to be using mostly a dirty brush. I'm not going to clean my brush through this process. I don't mind if the different colors are blending and mixing. In fact, that's what I want. So I'm not going to bother with cleaning my brush off. That'll just take time. I'm using a dry brush technique. After I've gotten most of the paint off my brush, I'm going to drag it over the high points of this texture. And some of the excess paint will come off and you'll get those beautiful textured uh, ridges showing up. PVA glue is an acrylic based glue so it works well as a base for acrylic paint. I have not tried to use oil paint with a PVA glue. I don't know if the two will bond well so I haven't tried it. But I do know that for the most part it works for acrylic paint but it's going to shift around and you're going to get cracks and if you're okay with that they can make a very neat abstract effect. But I don't think I would use this as a good texturing agent for say a landscape. I might keep it too abstracts where things can move around and that's okay. Bit of the cobalt blue bringing that in, a little bit more of the white there. When I started this abstract today I really didn't have a plan in mind. I didn't think about what I was going to paint before I started. I just began where it felt right and I'm going to keep playing with this until I get it looking where I'm satisfied with it, where I feel like it's done, and when I reach that point, whenever that is, I will stop. I usually allow myself about 30 to 40 minutes for these paintings. Sometimes they take less than 10-15 minutes, sometimes they take an hour. You never know. This size, 14 by 18 inches, the canvas board I mean, is a 14 by 18 inch canvas board, and that size typically takes me about 20 minutes to complete an abstract if I'm working quickly and I'm feeling it like I am today. Sometimes it takes me longer. It really just depends on what is going on that day, how tired I am, if I'm feeling inspired. Today I'm definitely feeling inspired. A friend of mine, Dave Usher, he does a lot of watercolors, but has switched over to doing a lot of acrylic abstracts lately. Uh, he mentioned me in one of his most recent videos, Drifting, and i thankful for that. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. I hope you're watching. And so this painting is sort of my artistic response to his last painting. Stylistically, it's not too similar, although he did have a lot of blue and grays in his, so I'm starting with that as my basis and then branching out to wherever I feel like my own intuition will take me from there. Back to that ultramarine blue there, still using my large 3 inch brush. I just want to note here that that blue I'm adding right now, that light blue, is a touch more in the gray. Um, then it's appearing on the camera. I'm not sure why my camera tends to make the blues pop a little bit more than they actually do. So just keep that in mind when you're seeing that on the screen there. It's a touch more to the gray family than that light blue that's appearing now. I've adjusted the contrast settings, adjusted the coloring slightly to try to accommodate for that, but I'm still having trouble getting it just right. So 
bear with me on that. Just know it's a touch more on the gray side of things. So if you saw it in person, you would see that it's a touch more gray than light blue as you're seeing there. All the other colors are correct. It's just that light blue, so for some reason, doesn't want to show up quite right. I'm not sure why that is. Someone knows in the comments and want to let me know if you can figure that out. That would be helpful. Thanks. Okay, some titanium white. Back to the ultramarine blue. I'm going to be using a lot of the ultramarine blue in this piece. I really like it. I haven't used ultramarine blue in a while. I used to use it all the time. I switched over to cobalt blue for a lot of my landscapes. And um, I still had some in an older tube of the acrylic paint that I used. And I thought, hey, I should use it in this piece. It's a nice deep blue. Okay, taking some matte liquid medium, some red oxide, and some titanium white. With my flat wash brush, I'm going to start to add some contrast color with this red oxide. As it dries, it becomes sort of a reddish brown. And in the final piece, it looks sort of brown, more brown than I thought it was going to be. But if you wanted to do a painting similar to this, perhaps use more of the red. I think that would have been a neat effect to have more red in this. But I actually don't mind having it be dominated by the blue for the most part. I'm mixing it with white so that the red isn't too strong. I don't want it to be a burst of red. I want it to be just subtly so. Bit more red oxide here on this side. We're having it playing and dancing throughout. The blue unifies the composition and I think the red is a counterpoint to it and helps set the whole thing off. Just dragging gently upward there. I love using these wide flat wash brushes. They have a nice sharp edge to them and they're very springy, react well to the textured canvas. You can see already that some of that PVA glue has shifted down and some of those cracks are starting to become more pronounced, especially in the center of that canvas. A bit more of the red oxide mix here. I find that when you're painting an abstract, it's sort of a balancing act. I've said this before in other paintings, but it's really true for me. I find that I'm always striving for a balance of white versus black, blues versus reds, and I find that I also like it better when I keep the palette more limited. I find that it can help make it feel more unified and look aesthetically more pleasing. I see a lot of artists, especially on like Google+, Plus and other places like that who share their art and they do these abstracts that are extremely colorful and lots of lots of varying shades of colors and clashing and and that's all right and that's perfectly fine but when i'm looking at an abstract personally i prefer it to be on the more unified spectrum unless of course you're going for a single stark contrast like red yellow versus blue or maybe yellow versus purple where you're purposely making the entire composition about that clash but to have a myriad of colors pinks and yellows and blues and browns and blacks and all sort of mixed together in this cacophony of, s of sound if you will it, it doesn't translate as well to the viewer I don't think at least personally my aesthetic sense I'm just not as interested in it so I like the abstracts that are slightly more unified and use less colors, an economy of means, if you will. That, to me, is where some of the beauty happens. If you can create something that's striking and interesting with just a few colors, then I think you've done something fairly remarkable. If you have to rely on a ton of colors to create what you're doing, that's fine. But it's more impressive, I think, if you can do it with less colors. So my personal challenge and one way I can get my creativity going is by forcing myself to use less colors, to be more creative and to figure out ways of making it interesting without suddenly relying on, I need something to happen over in this corner, I'm gonna grab a different color. Uh, that being said, if it's too simple and too few colors, it won't be interesting. So it's just finding that balance, like I said at the beginning, finding that fine line between them. You can see I've added some more pure titanium white in a few sections, really globbing it on in a few spots. And then I'm going back again with the red oxide. 
that Mars black down at the bottom was already on the canvas board and I just lifted it upwards with some blending. So that black was already there. Adding some more to the top. It's always a good idea when you're painting an abstract to have at least one color that actually goes across and hits the border of the canvas. A lot of artists like to have like a box and then you have a lot of activity in the center. And while that's fine to have activity in the center, you want to make sure that you are having something that's going to help your viewer kind of enter the piece and exit the piece. And so one way I like to do that is to make sure that at least on one side, I have one of the colors entering the painting from somewhere else and it helps the viewer feel like it's a small part of a bigger idea, at least I think so. Now in this next part, I'm going to start to create a geometric pattern of triangles here using the mixture of Naples yellow plus the red oxide. I actually decide that I don't like the final result of these triangles and I end up obfuscating it and trying something else. But part of the process was trying it, trying to add some more structure to the piece seeing how it looked, did I like it, and then deciding I didn't like it, so I went on to something else. And that's the beauty and the joy of painting for me, is that if you don't get something to work the first time, you can always just cover it up, and that's perfectly fine to do so. Never feel like you're stuck with what you put onto the canvas. You can always change it. And so that is part of the reason why I like painting better than drawing. I find when I'm drawing, I have to make it perfect. I have to get my lines perfectly straight. And if you don't get them straight, you have to erase them. But if you erase them, it's still there, in a sense. You can still see where you messed up. But painting is I can mess up as much as I want. There's a safety net. Because if I mess something up a few brush strokes later, like I'm doing here, and I can quickly just get rid of it. Here, I'm taking some liquid medium, which will allow the paint to flow, and I'm blending that into the red oxide Naples mixture that I have from those lines on the canvas. I'm going to try to smear out these lines, because I didn't like them, but at the same time I'm adding color, sort of in a loose pattern around the painting. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to add some other colors over a few of these lines and a few of the spots to, again, mask the lines as they are right now but in the end I think it's important to have these colors where they ended up but I don't think the lines was the right choice and that's part of the process you have to try something see how it looks and make adjustments from there overall I'm very pleased with the look of this painting I'm liking the way it's turning out. It's not quite there yet, but I'm pretty close and I can feel it. Most of the canvas is filled in at this point, and I have a general sense of what this painting looks like and what the scope of this painting is. I just have to figure out the final few steps. Here, I'm taking some pure ultramarine blue, bring it down from the top right corner all the way down to the center. I think that this dynamic burst of color it's going to help pull the whole painting together. And in fact, it did do exactly like I thought. Create some interest on this top right corner, connecting the composition together. Adding some more of that lighter blue mix here. Again, covering up some of that line. Right into the white on the right hand side using my flat wash brush, and then straight into the Mars Black. Bring this out a little bit more here on the left. I just felt the whole painting had too much white on it, so some pure color, like I've added, is going to help create that interest and create some beauty. Combat the overwhelming amount of white. There should be a lot of white in this painting, because if you have just black and blue, it'll be too dark. 
So white is important, but if you have too much white, it's not going to look quite right. So it's kind of a balancing act. There's some more titanium white, and back to the ultramarine blue. A little bit more of the blue at the top there. Just dabbing it here and there where I feel like it needs to go. All the way to the bottom. Back again with some more of the white, covering up some of that black. Got a little bit too intense. Lifting upwards there, quickly. Working very fast. Really feeling it at this moment. I'm seeing what should go where. I'm really in the flow at this point. bit more of the white up here. Gently scraping that over the black, kind of calming it down a bit. 